As we come back, let us remind you that at the close live, Serling on Saratoga is coming to you live from the Parting Glass Pub in downtown Saratoga and is presented by Naira. Wager on Naira.com, Naira's new state-of-the-art wagering interface. Want to welcome everybody back to At The Post Live. Once again, I want to thank Eric Cancel. And he's a tough act to follow, but uh, I think my next guest, David Donk, is up to it. Now, if you're not familiar with David Donk, you're just not following racing in New York. How long have you been in New York training or working around the horses? Uh, I've been in New York 30 years. I came to work for Woody 30 years ago, 1985. Now, is that the first, was Woody Stevens, and we'll talk about that. Is that when you first got into racing in 1985? No, um, I've been around horses since I was about eight. Uh, worked on the racetrack. That's not 30 was... years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Let me pull my license out. Um, man, I'm a lot older than I think I am. Uh, I tell you, I, Aren't we all? I got my badge when I was 16 at Finger Lakes, and... Then in 1980, I got my trainer's license, and I trained for my dad for five years. And uh, then I was greatest opportunity in the world. I got an opportunity to go to work for Woody and uh, called up my dad and said, I'm not coming back this spring. I was in Florida and, and uh, had a house and everything, and he sold it for me, and uh, I, I moved to New York, and I've been very fortunate here ever since. So, so you worked for Woody Stevens, the legendary Woody Stevens. How did that come about? Uh, the relationship was uh, Billy Walmont, who's here from Saratoga Springs. Uh, I worked for a trainer in Finger Lakes who trained horses for his dad, Wee Walmont, in Rochester. And uh, uh, he always said, if you want a job in the wintertime with Woody Stevens, I could get you a job in rubbing horses. And I trained at Finger Lakes, which is from April to November. So one winter, I was down there, and he called and said there was an opening. For an assistant trainer and Phil was Phil Gleaves was going on his own. He took some of the Strana courses and uh, 1985. And I went over. I was in Florida. I went to Hialeah and I met Sandy Bruno. And Sandy hired me. And uh, uh, the rest is history. So what what was it like working for Woody? Because Woody's Woody's a legend, and you came in towards the end of his streak of Belmont wins. Uh, I was there for the last two. So I was there for. Crown Fresh and Stephens Odyssey won two, and then Dancing Connection in 1986. So uh, I get chills when I think about it. It was phenomenal. So I, I was there near the end of his career, but um, you know he was a legend in his own time, and I knew it. And I, even though being from Finger Lakes, I followed racing at that level. I never thought I would be here, but um, so t for me to go there, uh, you know, I would have stayed 20 years. I, I really enjoyed it and the kind of horses we were around, obviously, and the kind of clientele. And the game was different then because he never carried more than 36 horses. So, um, you know, but I, very fortunate, a lot of great people. And, uh, you know, it, it let me, allowed to, you know, allowed me to stay here. So Woody won all these races and he had 36 horses. I mean, he must have also been some of the farms, or really that's all no. he pretty much had. No, uh, barn three and four at Belmont, 18 two-year-olds, 18 older horses. We would start with, I went to spend a couple winters in Aiken, South Carolina, and the most uh, we could have there is 22 to 24. And uh, by the time we came out of there in April, you had room for 18 at Belmont. And um, that was it. It's pretty amazing. Uh, it really is. And, and, and so Woody, Woody, when he won the, the fifth straight Belmont with Dancing Connection, um, that was, I mean, he was, he was actually a pretty big long shot. He's probably the biggest price of any of them. He paid by $18, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure what he paid. Uh, you know, he was, he ran in the Breeders' Cup, had his chip in his knee. I think he was last in the Breeders' Cup. He's a good two-year-old, though, uh, before that. Yes, ran against Stormcat. And, yeah. and, uh, and the young American. When Graham worked for uh, Jonathan Shepard. Is that right? He had, oddly enough, not knowing at the time, but... Uh, we ran over there in the prep for the Young America, yeah. and then the Young America, and uh, we you know what's favorite? Here's Cat. here's a, here's a trivia question: Who was favored in that Young America? I bet Storm I, I was there that you're, night. You're the gambler. I don't know. Groovy, no. The sprinter. Uh, Groovy was two to one favor. Look it up. Wow. Wouldn't I, even know he was in the race. I think he finished fourth. Wow. It's pretty well. It's amazing to know the race is Groovy. Didn't I think Groovy ran the Kentucky Derby? Uh, they, I know they. Tried to. Yeah. yeah, I feel like they did, but yeah. anyway. We, but Dan's connection came back from surgery, and Woody was pointing for the Belmont. And like, you got to be kidding me with this horse. He ran an allowance race. Um, when we got back to New York, Jerry Bailey rode him twice. He got beaten two allowance races. And then we ran him in the, I think, the, the Peter Pan, and Pat Day rode him, and he won on him. And he said, I've got a commitment to Rampage. And he said, I can't ride him. So Woody waited for Pinkeye's agent to call him, and he never called. 
Chris and, McCarron. And he got Chris, and that was Chris's first classic. Is that right? Yeah. Wow, yeah. that was a that was a good field. I mean, that was there were a lot of really nice horses in that race. I think uh, John's Treasure was in there. Personal Flag was in there. Uh, well, it was uh, John's Treasure and Ferdinand. Right, Ferdinand. So as well. it, that was the coolest Belmont because it had the three guys, you know, Whittingham, Walter Kelly, yeah. and Woody Stevens. What was Walter Kelly like? He was a real legend, wasn't he? Same thing with the quotes. One of his greatest quotes. Uh, you know, I always talk about, too, when you have a good horse, is a loaded gun will go off in anybody's hand. So, you know, and like what he would say, a good horse will make up for all trainers and riders' mistakes. Yeah, I always remember seeing Woody in the old days. Knight was a kid and they just knew him around there. But we'd see him at Bruno's, um, the, the, the pizza place across from the racetrack, eating breakfast and drinking beer. Yeah. Um, one of the things was Esposito's across the street at Belmont. <laughs> A hard-boiled egg and a beer. So, yeah. But listen, there, there's a reason they were called hard boots. So. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, also, at 10 o'clock in the morning for him was like midday for, 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 for people like myself. So it, it wasn't exactly early in the morning. For well, I like to say, it's not the 40 days that'll get you. It's the 40 <laughs> nights. And you might right, know. Right. For me, it's 50 <laughs> nights. But uh, who's counting? And some of them caught up me now because I have a cold. Um, so, so you worked for Woody uh, until when? Uh, beginning in 91, I went on my own. Basically, was pushed to. His health was bad in 90, and uh, he never came back to New York that year. So the stable got reduced, and uh, then I ended up taking, like, five horses on my own. Did, were they owners that Woody had? Yeah, oddly enough, there were two for uh, Jim Ryan, Rye Hill Farm. And then a couple years later, I had a wad, and I still have a horse that Bluegrass Rye for Jim today. And uh, then I had three horses for Henrik Fiakowski um, for a couple years until they bought Calumet, and then I kind of got pushed out. Um, but it helped me get started. I had a couple of good horses. I had Leck the first year in 91. first stakes winner, I think. Yeah, he won the Lexington, and then he won what at the time was the Gallant Man, which is now the Hall of Fame, with right. Angel Cordero from the 12 hole. Really? Yeah. Wow. Phenomenal ride. Yeah. That guy could ride. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I was teasing with Eric. I think for somebody like him, it hasn't been here. And Angel was here with us last year. Unless you were in Saratoga when Angel was riding, you can't imagine. He was he was bigger than anyone I've ever seen since Yeah, he, you know, they call him the king of Saratoga. He was bigger than He that. was a phenomenon. Yeah, so. And I don't know if I can follow that in impersonation, Eric, of Angel, but <laughs> if it was videotaped, uh, we'll get it critiqued by Angel tomorrow. <laughs> Angel was pretty great when he was here last year, actually. Um, so, uh, now, was Awad the first really, really big horse you had? Well, to this point, he's the first. He's the, really the only horse that I've had to do anything like that. But he ran 72 times. So, he really? Yeah, How many grade so, ones did he win? One, sword uh, Dancer? Four. And... He won the Sword Dancer. He won the Million. He won the Manhattan. Um, he won the Secretariat. So he won four grade ones. Yeah. He's one an amazing year, horse. One year, he never won a race that made over a million dollars. Really? Yeah. He was amazing. 72 times. He must have run until he was six or seven or eight. Yeah, even. until he was seven, yeah. Went to Japan twice, yeah. California a lot, yeah. Really? I mean, listen, a horse like that's a lifetime, so, yeah. What's it like when you would go over to Japan with him? Um, the first time, Jim Ryan twisted my arm to go, and I really didn't want to go, and uh, it twisted my arm, and I went, and the greatest thing I ever did, and... I went back the next year. He finished fifth both times, uh, made 180000 one time, 168 the next. And your trip was paid for. So uh, the commission was good. This was a part. long time ago, too, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, it was a great experience. I've died to go back again uh, anywhere else, even Dubai. I've never been. So it was a, it was a great experience. And uh, I talked to people like Bill Mott and Mandela. They had been there before and gave me a little bit of an education. And uh, he was a horse that traveled well and... Um, and ran really well. Sing Spiel won the race one year, and it was a heck of a field of horses. Got beat a length and a half, was fifth. And Fifth's pretty good in Japan. Over there, it was big. Right. So, And it's been really hard for horses to go over there in the last 10 or 15 years. We've had no success no, really at all. I don't think anybody's um, hit the board in a long time. Yeah, I mean, Coda Shan, I feel like, was fourth in one of those 20 years ago. Uh, 20 when Kent years ago. stood up too soon right, on the right. wire. Not he was he, born not too Yeah, <laughs> that was the only time he ever did it, so yes. it's never, I'd love to have him on the show. Um, I've had some conversations with him. I always want to talk to you about a horse of yours that I don't know if people remember, but I, I, I'm not sure that one of the most talented horses you ever had was an incurable optimist as a two-year-old. He was an amazing horse as a two-year-old yeah, before getting he, hurt. He was a really, really good horse. Um, broke his maiden year. That was when grass racing was not that popular, and we had entered him. I think he didn't get in until the fourth time, and we had to beg 
the race to get put up as an extra. And fortunately, Billy Mont had a lot of them, so he was in there. Uh, and he broke his maiden by 14, and, you know, really impressive. Went to the Meadowlands, got in a ton of trouble, still won by three. Won the Pilgrim by six or seven lengths. And then uh, we took him to California and ran him generous when that was two or 250 at the time. And it poured rain. And I'm like, oh, my God, we're out here. And, and he galloped. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the plan was to go to the 2000 Guineas the next year. And he was at Hylia and got a tendon injury and was retired. Um, he stands in Argentina now. And he's sired the winner of two Pellegrini winners. Is that right? Yeah. So... Um, you know, the biggest race in South America. So he's been a very successful sire there. He might be the most talented two-year-old grass horse we've ever had in this country. I think he ran buyer figures. Might be over 110 or something on the turf. He ran some crazy, crazy yeah. numbers. It was one of those where Andy Byer said that he should have won the Eclipse Award yeah. for two-year-old. That's how good he was. What but he was really that? was. He was uh, 98. Yeah, he, he's a horse that sticks out. He's a horse I think a lot of people don't remember, but he really feels like one of the more talented horses we've had in the country. Yep. And he was bred by Bill Wilmot, who has a farm oh. here, Stepwise Farm. Was yep. he so. bred around here? He was, in, he was a New York bred, yeah. Amazing horse. On top of it. So. Oh, I think another New York bred, and you've been involved with the New York bred program a lot, would you say? Yeah, well, you know, my stable really is lower scale. I mean, uh, a lot of homebreds, horses that are not, you know, purchased for a lot of money, so... In turn, uh, a lot of local people with New York Reds and, uh, you know, a, a lot of success with them and fortunately a few good ones. Hessenite. Uh Hessenite was huge. Yeah. yeah. She was sold to Japan, play. right? No. Uh, she's in Kathy? this country. A oh, guy, Tom Ryan, that has DAT stables, D-A-T-T, that sure. Mark and Mark Bill Hattie, trained sure. for. Right. He bought her in, I, she either had a Medellia Dior or Bernardino. So, yeah. She was terrific. I love that turn of foot. Yeah, she liked the soft. It's on grass, too. you know. On that, on the grass, that's the biggest thing I harp on my clients. Is you're, you're looking at for that horse with a turn of foot. Yeah, I think she broke her maiden in an off the turf race at Belmont, her second. It start. was, but it was dry. Yeah, uh, it was real. It was a really bad field, and it was one of those where I experimented and said, "Well, you know, we'll try them on the. You try them all on the dirt one time." She won, and I'm like, now what do I do? And I ran her back in a stake. She didn't run any good. Right, like the mist or probably or something. Yeah, right. and then I ran her one more time at Aqueduct, and Edgar rode her, and she got beat 42 lengths. And the owners, Bill Punk and Phil Bloom, Bill said, what the hell are we going to do with her now? And I said, I think she's a grass horse. So let's turn her out and brought her back. And as you know, she won that first race. And the pouring, they would rock, never have run. It was closing day, or they never would have run the race. The, the only race they ran, uh, Johnny was second. I, Johnny broke her maiden, and Angel had a call, and so Ramon rode her, and uh, it was a bog. And they were like, are you sure you want to run her? And I said, well, if she's a good horse, they run grade ones and soft courses. And, and she ran really well, and they came back, and Ramon was saying, yeah, the grass course isn't that bad. And you know how Johnny and everybody's screaming, what are you talking about? And they're like, maybe you need to watch the race. Everyone told the other riders, and she just skipped over the ground. She's yeah. very European-like. Yeah, she was a, she was really really good. It's funny. I remember her first start because it was at Saratoga, and I bet her. And I was watching the race with Linda Rice, and she, she got a bit of a test ride. Who um, who won the race? Ooh, I don't know. You stumped me. Get out of here. <laughs> who won? I ran another horse that I had run once at five and a half in the grass, and I owned a piece of her. She was by Thunder Gulch, and she won the race. And I loved Hessenite that day because I put Johnny on her. Johnny rode yeah, yeah, my right. horse. Yeah. And I had a decision. I said, I'm going to run these two horses. This one's got a race underneath her, but I like this one. So I let Johnny get on Hessenite. Ramon rode the yeah, other right. one. And she won, and she was never seen again. But uh, yeah. Well, I, so I wanted to bet Hessenite. So I was with Linda, and I was ready. She said, that horse of yours, you should uh bet that horse next time. I said, I bet that horse next time. So then when it won at Belmont, it paid $20, but it was off the turf. I saw her later, and she said, you bet that horse at Dave's? I said, I bet that. I'm not stupid enough to bet that horse in the dirt. And, of course, it paid $20 when it broke its maiden, but got the money with her a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah, she was, she was a good horse. Now, you were talking about how Woody and having 36 horses and different operations. Obviously, the game has changed a lot, and there are a, number, a smaller number of outfits have dominate the game. How, what is it like? I want to talk to John Terranova also a little about this. You have a smaller operation flying in the face of these pe people who have many, many horses. Yeah, it's definitely the sport has changed. Um, you know, Wayne really changed the sport with being the first one to have 100 horses or more. Um, I guess as we would call them, mega stables. So um, it's different, especially when you come here and you run in allowance races or maidens and, and uh, you know, the guys are do a great job, but they've got a lot of bullets. And uh, 
So, you know, it's different, but, you know, I'm very comfortable with the number I have. I have great clients. Um, you know, I, I feel I have a good business model for me, and uh, it works for me, so uh, I'm, I'm comfortable where I'm at. And you spend the, the year with us in New York. Yeah, year-round. You used to spend a lot of winters, Faye and I, in Florida, um, till the kids were old enough, and uh, Paul was in school in fifth grade, and decided to make the decision to stay in New York year-round, and um, and now the money, the economics dictated, so it's it's difficult to go to Florida, and I think the biggest thing is my grass horses will get a break, and I'll turn most of them out for a couple of months and bring them back, and uh, you know, at, it works for you. At April's my month. Good about this it. year I got hurt a bit because we didn't get on the grass till yeah, the middle of yeah. April, so um, that hurts my bottom line a little. But um, sorry, we'll try to do something about the weather yeah, next year. That snow stuck around a little too long, so I knew I was in trouble. But yeah, I've stayed year round and um, you know make the best of it in the winter time. But the money's great, and uh, you know, and like I said again, it works for my business model. Well, I mean, the New York Bread program, obviously, with, with the Racina, with the money, the, the program has, has exploded. I mean, the sale this weekend is probably going to be pretty big, I would guess. Uh, it'll be really, really competitive. But, um, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's a way that, you know, when you've got a horse, you know, even if he's a really nice horse, but if it's not, um, you have a chance to get out. An owner has an opportunity, and you run for really good money, and, and uh, you know, the wintertime, um, you know, they, they live on those horses. Yeah, no. Um, and, Especially when we're all dirt racing. So, right. Yeah. And there's opportunities for those horses to yeah, run as well. And listen, there's been a lot of good ones, and there'll be a lot more. No, I agree. And, and now the fast tipping sale, I believe, was up 40%. I mean, they must be expecting some serious numbers. How many horses are selling this weekend at the sale? Uh, you know, I haven't even opened the catalog. So really? That's a good question. I'll go over there, but I haven't even looked at it yet. So you, I let someone else do the legwork. Oh, but. okay. Well, you, you think you'll be involved in buying some horses? Uh, yeah, just? we'll try to, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. so I know it's a keep replenishing, weekend. yeah. Right. That's, that's the name of the game is replenishing. Well, Dave, we really appreciate you coming up here. And uh, let's talk about King Creasa first, running in the four-star Dave. I mean, he, he's really, I mean, he's just, he's, he seems to be as good, if not better, than ever. Yeah, listen, he was a really good horse. You know, when I got him, Jeremiah, you know, did a phenomenal job. The horse had a great career. And um, so, you know, last year he had a foot injury right after I got him. And, uh I lost a lot of time with him. I hurried up and got him ready for the West Point last year, and um, I think he overcame the trainer to win it. I, I was shocked that he won off the layoff like that. I ran a couple of pretty good races after that, put him away again, and came back and uh, ran him in the seven eighths, which really wasn't his cup of tea, the open race, the first start. Uh, ran a good race in the York Red race, but, you know, he got beat by Lubash and Carafa, who are... They're, they're you know, tough. just two really good horses. And, you know, being that we're in New York, we elected to run in the poker. He had won it before, and Jerry, Susan, and Creasa are game. And, um, you know, listen, obviously he won the race a little bit speed conducive and, you slow know, pace. very slow pace. But Jose rode him for the first time, did a great job with him. And the same scenario coming back four weeks later, it's the Forbidden Apple. You know, I'm not going to ship him out of town. And... Um, but he was impressive that day. I he was super impressive. I, I won't say it very often, even as a fan, but I, even for myself, I was like, wow. So hey, It might be one of the best turf performances we've seen all year in this country, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, he rated. He didn't. He, the he horse ran off. And, and, you know, he did what he was supposed to do. Jose rode him with a lot of confidence. He rode him like he's ridden him ten times. And, uh, you know, when Reload came to him, like, well, here's a favorite. He's supposed to come to him. And, uh he just he rebroke. So yeah, was, that was that was impressive, and he yeah. seemed. I mean, he two years ago he almost beat White Wise Dan in this race, so you know he can handle that course in Saratoga. Yeah, he's run well here. I was impressed with his race last year, so I'm really comfortable with him running here. And you know he looks well, and you know like I said, somebody else. The biggest challenge for a trainer, I think, is when a horse is really good to keep him there. But uh, you know he's been on the same schedule and. Uh, I'm just fortunate to run in it. So. Now he's got the target on his back, though. That's the problem. He's sort of been yeah, fooling um, over the last couple times. Yeah, for some reason, everyone knows who he is now. So. <laughs> right, right. It's the way <laughs> for, it goes. For a couple races, they lost sight of him. Yeah. But um, it, it was kind of maybe nice being under the radar. But it, it's great. He's a very good horse. He went over a million dollars. Listen, he's another New York bred, and that stands out for them. And uh, so it, it's a lot of fun. Broke his maiden in a $25,000 maiden claiming race. Yeah. Remember that day. <laughs> anyway, Dave Donk, thanks a lot for joining us. Everybody, David Dunk. My pleasure. Thanks. Stay with us as we come right back. At the Post Live is brought to you by Timeform US. Visit timeformus.com, the site for the modern horse player.